All right, you beautiful people. I told you I would bring you the upgraded M2 MacBook Air and I have it here. So I'm gonna bring you behind the scenes of this video editing setup here. And we're gonna run through very similar set scenarios and even a couple of different like different things uh, that I wanna try, like adding in a clip and, and adding in some effects and seeing how these machines handle that. So let's get into it. All right, we're playing this timeline. Base model on my right, upgraded version is the classic silver, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage. We are on external SSDs, the same exact enclosure. I have tested these thoroughly. They do, as far as video editing, are the same as editing on the internal. So let's take a look and see what we are looking at here as far as the... Processing, so definitely no frames seem to be dropped yet. I, I definitely had a little bit of a blip here on the upgraded version when I was trying to get to iStat. As far as GPU is concerned, looking the same. We'll look at a couple of other numbers here. Um, Final Cut Pro is processing at about 68 to 70% on the upgraded versus on the base model. Interesting. So let's take a look at some memory pressure here. Oh, we're already swapping on the base. So, and we have, so 33% memory pressure on the 16 gigs of RAM, 30, it's fluctuating in the thirties on the right here. It's fluctuating anywhere from 60s to as much as 80 I saw. And of course, swapping almost four gigs there and no swap on the 16 gigs of RAM, which we would expect. Final Cut Pro is utilizing about six gigs of RAM on six to eight. Of course, we're bumping up. That's the thing, as you're starting to play through, as it's getting through all of these, um, <laughs> the the effects and the LUTs and the color grading you know it's gonna it's gonna fluctuate but so it's it's going anywhere from tr six to eight ish uh gigs as far as the process is concerned same deal here we're kind of in the mid sevens to mid eights on the pressure here on the base model so as far as thermals are concerned we are 40 mid 40s on the upgraded and mid 50s on the base model so giving you a little bit of context there as far as efficiency cores let me look at performance performance same deal so about a 10 degree difference just playing through let's uh let's try to like scrub back see what happens here If I can grab it. Yeah, so you can actually see like, I mean, it's scrubbing. Hold on, let's see over here. Scrubbing through. So back and forward. All right, so let's add some footage here. This piece. I definitely know it's it's handheld. Now, of course, if I if I'm editing, I should have actually set up Ooh, look at that. So a little bit of beach ball action happened there as I'm trying to like grab, I should have set up my keyboard shortcuts, but it's it's terrible. So it's handheld. I wouldn't do a, I wouldn't use that footage the way that it is. But let's get, so we've got about a 10 second. Yeah, so roughly a 10 second clip on both. It's roughly the same clip. Let's just see what happens when we go into something like stabilization. So let's try that. All right, just seeing, and of course background render is off. I've probably forgot to mention that. So roughly handling that footage the same. I mean, if it was quicker on the 16, then it was like a split second. Now let's slow this footage down. So we're gonna go slow. Okay, now what we're gonna do, let me just move this over here. Now what we're gonna do 
is optical flow. So let's see what happens when we add in optical flow. Cause that's pretty intensive. All right, so it's working and I just wanna see if, if anything's happening with the GPU. So the optical flow is working as far as the thermals are concerned because we're, we're kind of, this is that short burst of a task or a demand and they are almost, so 50, like, no, I mean really the same. 54, 52, 54, 55 on the same. And as far as GPU is concerned, holding up as far as the frames per second, the same 60% uh, pressure on the process of Final Cut Pro that is. And as far as memory pressure, let's look. 24% on the 16 gigs of RAM, 43 on the base and swapping one out of two gigs. Oh, we started to swap a little bit, 244 megs on here. Um, Final Cut's using about four gigs and yeah, it's roughly the same, four and a half, almost five. And as far as the time it is to be finished, again, thermals, Same. Oh, so the 16 gigs did finish a, a couple seconds, a couple seconds. Again, these clips are probably not perfectly lined up as far as the exact uh, footage, but it, it's still about a 10 second clip. And we really didn't see anything as far as the thermals. So going back and just playing through this again, scrubbing through, oh, little beach ball on the 16 gig. Oh, and it's like, you get that like, what are we doing here, fella? All right, there we go. Might have been my bad, I'm not sure. User error, maybe it was the machine. <laughs> that stabilization is terrible. Looks like jello. Let's add, here, let's add an effect. We'll just do something, I think I have something from Pixel Films that I can just add uh, one of these jammies here that I use. So we'll do this one. And all right, so we're going to put that about right there. So I need to get my keyboard shortcuts. All right, so adding that, let's see what happens when we hit this new transition or this new sort of title. So didn't seem to miss a beat on either one. Okay, awesome. Memory pressure's back up as far as uh, what we're seeing as far as swap is concerned. Hanging out at 212, uh, 212 megs, um, so megabytes versus 2.7 gigs on the swap memory here on the base. And again, Final Cut Pro seems to be using roughly, uh, on the left right now, it's showing me six gigs. On the right, it's showing me seven and a half to eight and pressuring about 70% on the base and around 30-ish, maybe touching 40 on that pressure, uh, but even down to like mid to high 20s. Again, just depends on where we are on the clip, but we are in the same spot here. So this is what we have determined uh, from what I am seeing is that at least the RAM is being utilized and just less pressure on the upgraded version. And let's just double check our GPU here. So since we're on the same spot, let's kind of take a look at iStatistica and see what we're doing as far as graphics are concerned. I just want to see, yeah, see, it's really hard because when you have these bursts, so like 83% on the base model, 78 on the upgraded version, it, well, there we go. We hit a hundred on 
the upgraded version. And as far as the memory, roughly the same as far as what, so free 5.86 and free 4.37. All right, so playing that bigger timeline here, uh, up to six camera angles and almost an hour of footage, hitting play on both. The 16 gig starts to play, the base model is struggling. So thermals, 57, okay. 57 on the upgraded version here. 59. So as far as thermals are concerned, they're roughly the same because again, it, they're both having trouble working through this footage. So as far as memory pressure, still not even swapping a gig. Um, Final Cut's using up to 12 to 13 gigs. And my base model over here, he's, uh, he's having a he's at the beach because the beach ball keeps presenting itself here. I, I'm trying to get some stats for you and I can't. So let's see over while this is thinking about doing something here. Let's see if I can just scrub through this kind of come back. I, I can't scrub through it. Now there's the beach ball guy over here shared the beach ball with the upgraded one I was just having so much fun. Kind of locking up on the base. I just want to measure and it will not let me. It's trying to play the footage though. Video frames were dropped during playback. That's obvious. Okay. That is, that is, we've got to, we got to get out of here. This up to six uh, camera angles and uh, almost an hour long. It's a problem for both of them. All right, I had to force quit Final Cut Pro on both machines just to kind of get the ball rolling here. So now we have that 8K footage uh, that is transcoded and we should be playing back in 422 or at least be working with 422. Now we are in best, perf uh, best quality. Whoa. So it's definitely playing the footage on the 16 gigs of RAM. 49 degrees, uh, maybe touching even 50 over here. And we are still about another 10 degree difference on the base model. So as seems to be trending and dropping lots of frames. It actually is playing through almost maybe dropping one or two frames. Whoops. On the left. And it seems like the base model has started to pick up a bit. All right. Let's just get this out of the way. So you, just so you can see it. They both seem to be equitable as far as the frames being dropped and sort of playing through. Now let's go to better performance. If I can even get to better performance, just to see if that makes a difference here. Yes, frames were dropped during playback. You are correct. So does better performance make it and the one reason I, I just don't particularly like to work in better performance is uh, sometimes, you know, that footage can get a little soft and you really want to see it as it is, like how you're editing it. But we seem to be doing, so again, if, if you want, so I can scrub through that on the uh, universal control. So scrubbing through just this timeline there's nothing really, there's no transitions, no effects. I believe we did a little bit of color on these. 
So it's not too bad on better performance. But when we hit better quality, you can kind of see like, ooh, what are you asking me to do? So then we start to, to drop a few frames, but as far as those thermals are concerned, still 59 and now roughly the same. Cause again, I think that it's only able to read and write so quickly. The GPU is only able, I mean, we are working with ProRes, although we did jump, but then we came back. So it looks like we're, we're jumping intermittently. So we do seem to be a roughly the same on both machines as far as thermals are concerned on this particular timeline. Memory, let's take a look and see what our memory pressure is looking like. Whoa, okay. So on, that's the interesting thing. Hold on, I gotta get to it first. So here's that, here is something with this footage or what I'm doing. So on the M1, that is upgraded to 16 gigs of RAM. This is where I have that like memory leak. So Final Cut is using 22 gigs. And so I'm, I, I'm swapping almost 25 gigs on the upgraded version. And on the, on the base, I'm up, up to six, five and a half, six right now. There is definitely something going on with Final Cut or something uh, some kernel issue with these upgraded uh, machines. Cause again, on the previous video on the M1, I was having the same issue and I still need to dive in on what is really happening there. But it's like Final Cut is using 25 right now. Silly. And only between nine and 11, maybe up to, but roughly 10 on the base model machine. All right, quick summary here. First off, I love the machines, but knowing what I know, I have a hard time recommending them for primarily video editing. We've chatted up in the comments. I've talked to a few of you, and I think it could work for some of you. But if this is something that you are doing primarily, I would be concerned. I truly would. Knowing what I know with the M1 Mac Mini, the, the M1 Max, MacBook Pro, and of course the Studio, I know what those machines are capable of, and they handle video editing with no problems. So working in iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Resolve, that'll certainly help you with Apple Silicon. That's just my advice. Premiere, I have those on PCs. They work great on the PC in that x86 architecture. Not so much, at least for me, on Apple Silicon. When we moved up to that more complicated timeline from four to six, roughly between four and six different camera angles, adding in more LUTs, grading, transitions, forget it. Neither machine could handle that. And then even pivoting over to that 8K, ProRes, transcoded to ProRes, we could move through it, it was playing it. Um, it seemed to be that the, the upgraded 16 gigs of RAM was handling it slightly better, just maybe a slight edge, but I think really it's, it, it was so subjective, I think. Um, and then of course, knocking that down from better quality to better performance certainly can help your workflow. However, you're also making a sacrifice. I think when you're doing better performance, you're working in proxies, you're not seeing the footage as you want to see it, and so that to me is just a straight up no. I am not going to sacrifice the way that I work uh, and sacrifice any time to, to work, to make it fit into this device. That is just me. I'm not sure if that makes sense. I, I, I don't know if this is helpful because you're gonna find so many people on the platform saying like, this could be my only uh, video editing machine. I would be fine running my entire channel with this machine and so be it, that's fine. Uh, but you should even ask Fenson of uh, Gadget Sue, uh, a, a great human out there. He has used an M1 MacBook Air and he loves the machine for what it does for him as a student, but as a video creator, he like you can get some things done, but he has also struggled. He's been very vocal about it on Twitter and I can certainly link him up. You can reach out to him and ask him what he thinks, at least from the M1 MacBook Air uh, from that perspective. That being said, I really appreciate your time on this and I will have more videos out, more day-to-day -day use with these machines versus just all of this heavy creative stuff. You go out there and rock those faces and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.